Well, welcome, actually, welcome to the Community <coughs> Preservation Commission meeting. Today is Wednesday, March 13th, and the meeting starts at 6. I will open the meeting to start coming? introductions to my left. Joellen Riley, uh, member at large. Larry Clausen, finance. Chaz Doughty, planning board. Ed Smith, conservation. Warren Allgrove, historical. Guy Janome, member at large. Colin Lizell, town manager. All right, we'll start off with the CPC balance updates. Yes. Um, so as this committee knows, fiscal 24 was a uh, expensive year for the committee with the $1.5 million that was allocated toward the Winslow School. Um, included in your packet, which we'll cover in a minute, is a draft warrant article for the May annual town meeting. The proposed spending totals $1.1 million. That's a combination of fiscal 24 receipts and fiscal 25 receipts, which is the upcoming fiscal year. After all of that, the balance in CPC spread amongst the different buckets. Again, after this spending article would be about $1.3 million. The, the committee generally gets about 1.2, a little shy of 1.2 annually, broken up in quarters. Yeah. And while the percent coming in on the tax bill increases because taxes increase, as you all know, the state's share is not increasing. The CPC coalition has been very ardently insisting on the state making good on their commitment to fully match what the town is contributing, but that has not happened. I read that they dropped it from 21 to 20% now. I didn't see the drop. Yeah. I'm sure I've seen several proposals that would drop it, but. So the, the old town hall is on seven of 10, so there's three years left on that. That'll, mm -hmm. yep. that'll be a nice drop off, and that was, that was definitely a good investment. Yeah. So that'll, you know, Yep. Cleared up a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Absolutely. All right. Anybody have any questions on that or comments? All right, meeting minutes. Anybody get a chance to read the, read the minutes? I'm sure they're going to be fine. Call and get them all up. All right. <coughs> yeah. Can I get a motion? Make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Thank you. <laughs> and there's probably one or two from before when I return that I need to catch up on. I haven't right. found them yet, but I'll have them for your next meeting. It's very helpful to have them in advance. Of yes. course. Have to help. An update on the Sherman Road Open Space Council. Yes. The Sherman Road Open Space Committee, I understand, is looking to meet sometime in April. But I wanted to just preliminary note that at this point, the clubhouse has been fully renovated by Toll Brothers. Um, Allison is not just ready, she's begging to move her things in there. Obviously until May town meeting when we formally accept by town meeting vote the land, we won't be able to use it for public purposes just yet, but certainly the planning is there. In terms of the design of the sport courts, um, that design is ongoing. I know that um, our rec director, Allison Page, town engineer, and our assistant town manager have met a few times now with the firm designing the sport courts. And the pavilion, while it appears to be just a roof with um, supporting beams because Mass General Law has specific procurement regarding building construction. They consider this vertical construction and so we had to hire an architectural firm to design it. It's cumbersome in Massachusetts but that firm has been hired. It shouldn't take them very long to have the renderings and then we'll put that project out to bid. The good part is because it is just a roof with walls we won't have to do the full DCAM certification which I won't go into. That would add a lot of money to the project. So. I expect that at some point in the next couple of weeks we'll have the draft renderings for the open space committee to review on both the sport courts and the pavilion and those projects will likely be ready to go out to bid sometime in June or early July. Now I'd like to set up a time if anybody else on the board is interested for all of us to go over and actually see it, the inside of the building, if anybody else is interested. I mean they did a really nice job. They, you know, they put solar panels on the roof, they put a heat pump heating system in, so and, and they did a a really nice job on it. They did a good job. And there was some, I know a few months ago, there was some water coming in the mm -hmm. basement and they had crack eggs go over there and fill all the cracks and that solved that problem. Yeah. So is anybody interested in? Definitely. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I can reach out to Allison and we can coordinate something that works yeah. for everybody. I mean, and if you can't all make the same time, we certainly can make multiple visits. Yeah. Excellent. Is that, um, do we anticipate that will come in on bud to budget or is that going to? I mean, there's an awful lot of things we planned out yep. there to lay out it, be on track for that. I'm sure the cost will come in slightly higher. One of the new, one of the things that will work in our advantage is that 
as the com- I don't know if CBC is aware, but the Sherman Road Open Space Committee is aware that um, there's a fitness court planned there, which is partially funded by a partnership with some national group in Blue Cross. This committee previously allocated forty thousand dollars, thanks to Mr. Smith for reminding me, as a match when we were looking to put that same structure at Riverfront Park. We also got a ten thousand dollar donation at the time from Lowell General. So the town already has fifty thousand dollars toward it. Blue Cross. I think it's fifty five. Fifty five thousand. Blue Cross chips in, and so does Maya, which is our health insurance company. With all of that factored in, we're looking at a difference of about twenty seven thousand dollars because Tingsboro has done great on maintaining its affordable housing inventory above 10%. We're eligible for a discretionary grant called Mass Housing Choice. And although it sounds like it's designed for housing, it's really just a reward for communities that have done well on affordable housing. We're applying for $300,000 through that grant, which we'll be notified of in September. We'll use the $27,000 to cover the difference on the fitness court grant, and then the balance will be put toward whatever other work needs to be done on the open space parcel. Obviously, the cost of everything is going up. One of the unexpected, one of the unplanned for, I think, was the expense of the architect to conduct the pavilion. Um, if this was a private job, we could have just hired somebody that regularly builds pavilions, but because it's a municipal job, there are burdensome laws to follow. So I don't think that it'll be a dramatic increase, but certainly I think we'll need to leverage some additional funding to make it make it work. So uh, additional funding coming from CPC then, or through other, these other grants and so forth that you Certainly mentioned? other grants is the first priority. Once we put the project, the actual construction out to bid, and even after we finish the design, we'll have hard cost estimates. There may be a need to ask CPC for additional money. It'll all be offset by that $300,000 grant. So until we know for certain what the cost estimates are, I'm not exactly sure what the magnitude will be. But it is possible that in October, we'd be asking CPC for some additional funding toward it. Okay. No, I think we've got to look hard and try and try to get, keep the prices down as, mm-hmm. as tight as possible and then see how far we get. Because, I, I mean, we've got to you know, try to pinch every penny we can. Yeah. Agreed. I think all of us on this board agree. And then we, I'll check with Gideon. I'll get him. might have some ideas mm-hmm. on how we can you know, keep these numbers down as, as low as possible. Yeah, and once I, when they schedule the next Sherburn Road Open Space Committee, I'll let this committee know as well so that you can either attend or watch it. Um, I imagine by that point they'll be further along in the design to have a better idea of what the cost will be. Anybody else have any comments? All right, final request, uh, affordable housing trust. Yes, so this is an interesting one. As many of you know, I just talked about how good we do on affordable housing. Tingsboro is above its 10%, which protects us against um, unfriendly 40Bs. It also el- makes us eligible for certain grants. That's because we have requirements that every development over a certain size includes a certain percentage of affordable units, and those are protected by a deed rider. After 2008, deed riders, the law around them changed so that the deed rider survived a foreclosure. However, there was a handful in Tingsboro, this being one of them, that were deed restricted before that law changed and they do not survive the foreclosure. In this case, this unit on Merrimack Way, we were notified last year that the bank was foreclosing for non-payment of the mortgage. At the time, we asked the bank to let us know if they'd be willing to work out a deal whereby the newly established affordable housing trust would purchase the unit. Working with the monitoring agent, which is community housing, we would remarket it as an affordable unit and then the proceeds of the sale would reimburse whoever the funder was. So at the time, we were thinking Affordable Housing Trust. The bank basically ghosted us, and we thought the issue was resolved. uh, Fast forward to about a month and a half ago, we were notified by the bank that they had scheduled the auction for the end of April. It wasn't resolved. And our understanding is the bank is interested in conducting the auction regardless of what the town wants. The select board has authorized town council to intervene. There are certain procedural things that we can do to ultimately slow down the auction. Basically, the lawyer told us, we have to foreclose by May 1st. And I said, well, we're having a town meeting six days later. Can't this wait six days? And her understanding was the bank just wanted to go through the motions. She also noted that because most people don't do deed research, when they see that it was an affordable unit, they generally don't show up to the auction because they don't want to buy an affordable unit. These developers obviously want a market rate unit. That said, we're still attempting to intervene in the auction, but we're preparing for the auction not to, you know, taking place, nobody buying it, and then the town having an opportunity to do just that, to purchase it, remarket it as affordable. It will keep it on our SHI, on the inventory, 
and it's a win-win. The Affordable Housing Trust has already been established. It's a legal entity now. It has $250,000 that this group allocated for renovations at the Indian Lane parcel. However, MassDOT, despite what seemed like a promising start in September, has been kicking the can down the road and it appears isn't ready at any time soon to transfer the deed over to the town, which is what we need to start the renovations. So what we'd be looking at if this committee is amenable is allowing them to use the $250,000 for Indian Lane to help toward the purchase of that unit. We would need approximately an additional $250,000 from this group to fund the purchase. We expect to have to buy it somewhere in the 440, 450 range. But CHAPA would as, act as our real estate agent at no expense to us. They would also likely bear all of the closing costs because this is the work that they do. They would resell it. Certainly we would sell it as affordable. We would put a correct deed rider in. And then we would reimburse first the $250,000 allotment for Indian Lane. And then the rest of the money that we spend would come back to the CPC. So in many ways, CPC would be acting as a interest-free loan, if you will, for the Affordable Housing Trust. We don't know if this will become an opportunity. However, town meeting has to vote on it if it does. So if we're successful in delaying the foreclosure, we will need to have some sort of vote if this is going to happen by May 7th. And so tonight, the, there's two requests on this. One is to authorize the Affordable Housing Trust to temporarily, I guess, repurpose that first $250,000. And then the second is a new appropriation from the Affordable Housing Bucket to acquire this unit. And because of the way this program works, like I said, the money would first reimburse the 250 for Indian Lane should that project come online. And then everything above that would come back to the CPC for you to reallocate however you see fit. What's the anticipation that, that we'd reap from the sale of that property? We're obviously going to have to sell it for 20% less than market value. Yeah. We'd lose 20% in this transaction? Well, we're hoping to negotiate with the bank. The bank is only owed $261,000, okay. and they are faced with the reality that their auction is likely not going to see anybody come. If they go through with the auction and nobody comes, then we're in a much better bargaining position, obviously. The one thing the bank is not is being kind of dodgy on is telling us what the number is that they would need from us to avoid a foreclosure auction. And so we know that it certainly can't sell for more than $500,000 as an affordable unit, and so that's kind of where, how we chose that cap. Yeah, but if we allocate that amount of money towards it, they're going to see it, and they're going to want that full value for it, too. You know what I mean? If, another thing, too, is, I mean, we, are, we have to have an article. We need an article for us to pull back the money from India Lane, correct? Your okay. CPC article would be amended to reallocate the funding, yeah. Right, so we'd have the warrant article for that first. That has to pass. Right. And then the extra funding. So, so, I mean, Indian Lane has been, what, five years now they've been waiting to do that property? That's not going to happen. So I say we just basically pull that money out. Done. And if they need it again? They could ask for it. Ask for it again. So take that 250 out and move, move it back into the CPC fund. So that'd be the first article. And then allocate, I mean, 350 for the property. Give them 350 for it. What's the impact of us losing one affordable house? How, how close are we to the line? Is it, Not close. It doesn't put us in peril. I mean, if I say this every time, then we'll get close. But on this particular one, we would still be well above. We would have to drop four or five units to make me concerned. Well, we're, we're picking up 16 over on right. Sherbin right now. Yeah, but yeah. You're, all, yeah. you're also building 100 over 100 there, over this. Right. So, yeah, but, but we're taking so, 16. So we're on the right side of it, uh, yes. Yeah, six, the 16 is basically, what, 160 units. Mm hmm So the 16 will give us the 160. Are we, are we close to 12% or are we close to the under 11? No, you're, you're I think it's like 12.6. Oh, so we're close to 13%. Yeah. I don't understand how half a million is affordable either. I know, I'm you, thinking the same thing. affordable the, and half a million in the same sentence. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Well, the, that would have to put them at value of six hundred thousand. I get it. And I don't, no. I don't th think there's some six hundred thousand over there. Those units aren't selling for that over there, are they? Like, I think it? close. But it doesn't have a garage. It's not one with a garage. It's one, like the first building on the right, I think. Yeah, it? I don't think that's a garage. Yeah. So there's also no ten, and I should have started with the more. There's nobody currently living there. That was my first concern: was that the town doesn't want to become a landlord. Next question. But the the. Prior, or the, I guess the current owner until the bank forecloses has already moved out, so the building. Has anybody been inside and looked at? Did they trash before they left? That's a great question. I'm not sure. Yeah, what kind of shit? So, so the bank is owned is owed two sixty one. Mm -hmm. 
the value of the property is closer to 500? I think in the low 400s, like 440. Low four. So, so I'm having a tough time seeing what the pro so so the bank's goal is so if if the bank gets 400 at auction, do they is that their profit to keep? On a private foreclosure like that from the bank, yes. The law has changed so that if they owe that if we foreclosed on it for back taxes, we would have to return anything that we weren't owed back to the property owner. Yeah. But the bank isn't subject to that same rule. The bank right now is hedging on there being interest from outside of the town. Obviously, the bank is made whole if we just pay them the 261. That was the number two weeks ago. Obviously, it's accruing interest every day. They're hoping that somebody else who knows the deed doesn't survive foreclosure will come in and buy it for the 400 and then resell it closer to the six. And until they do their auction or agree because of our procedural interventions, they're still hoping that they're going to make more money. And because there's a town meeting vote required, while obviously we'd hope to spend less than 500, we wouldn't have a quick mechanism to say, no, we really need this much and come back and ask for more. So the bank doesn't really want 261. They want like 400. Like they're, they're oh, yeah. As much as they can, as much get. As they can yeah. get. Yeah. Is there any way to get the bank to do the right thing? <laughs> like what they should do? <clears throat> we could try. Way? And the thing is, too, if we know that whoever buys it doesn't have to resell it as affordable, I'm sure they know that they're, they're, they have lawyers. They probably know the same thing. Don't correct? they have to? Isn't, that's aff affordable. No, they, but the that. deed rider is an old deed rider. It doesn't survive they foreclosure. It survives sale, but not foreclosure. So if somebody buys that, they don't. That we, we can lose the affordable. They don't have to sell it at an affordable price. And there's there's two other units there like that. There's two other remaining ones. I double checked on both of them. They've never been subject to action by the homeowners association, which is common before foreclosure. Because if you're not paying the mortgage, you're probably not paying the condo fees. They're also current on their taxes, and they haven't changed hands in 10 or 11 years. So those two are stable. I mean, there's nothing we can do until the deed is up to be transferred anyway. And the others, because there's some up on the hill, too, that were in that same era, right? My, town Council's deed research, including this one, showed that there were three units that had, that had that problem. the old deed rider, yeah. And just to clarify, the bank won't give you a number of here's what it will take, and we're happy, and it's yours. I'm assuming it's not a local bank either, right? Must be no. Right. Yeah. So if we purchase this, it stays an affordable? Because we'll be the new owners, and we can implement the deed, a new deed rider that would survive foreclosure. So we, let's say we buy it for 440 Yep. just to pick a number. Then we have to sell it as affordable based on what we paid for it or market rate? On the percent difference between market rate, which is 20%. So we're going to lose 20% of whatever we buy it for then. But if it's valued at 600, we're not going to. Right. Or if it's valued at 500, we would. The, the difficult piece here is that if, I, if we were private buyers, we would just negotiate based on how much money we have available. But there's not an entity in town right now that has any money. So I need first a CPC vote authorizing the money, and then a town meeting vote to authorize the money. So ideally, we would buy it for exactly what the bank needs to be made whole. But if I only ask for that amount, we go to town meeting, town meeting approves only that amount, and then the bank says, well, we have somebody who will buy it for 50 grand more. Now I'm up a creek because I have to wait until fall town meeting to ask for the additional appropriation. So we're going to appropriate this, and if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, and you'll pull it if, the, if the, it goes to foreclosure and someone buys it on the first. Yeah, the money would return. Yeah, it's CPC. Pull the whole article. And I don't remember who mentioned it, but you could, set, you could say that your interest is only to spend up to, say, 350000 if that's the will of the committee and we can't get it for 350000 but then we tried. I mean, I, I think if we go up too high, you know what I mean, and then we're stuck with it, we can't even sell it, we end up losing money. Well, I'd, I'd want to be able to sell it at an affordable price. Exactly. You, 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 affordable price right. of housing instead of, instead of trying to sell it for, for more, try and sell it for affordable. And maybe exactly. Maybe we get what we paid for it and it would still be affordable. Right. Well, yeah, that, that's the whole goal, but we don't want to pay – you know, 450 for it, and then find out at an affordable rate it's only worth 400. Yeah, so that's no the reality of, of, of what we're talking about here. Right. But if we could get the bank to do the right thing. Yes. So, so what do you think is a good number to put out the, the max we'll spend? I mean, if they're owed three weeks, two weeks ago they were owed 261. I 
I mean, I think if you set the cap at, I would, I'd feel more comfortable at 400, but I think at 350, I have something to work with and I can. I see we cut the cap. I, I think that's a reasonable number. I think so. Yeah, I do too. the risk there and then we'd be able to sell it as affordable. Right. Even to get our money back and still sell it as affordable, well below market, you know? Okay. What is market? We don't know what the price is. Well, let's take a look right now. It could be well, I mean, five it, to 600000 I mean, that's, yeah. that's really what the, the, the question here is. I mean, right you now. can go to four if, right. it's, if it's five's market, assuming that they haven't trashed the, the, the bank wants all their money. How can we find that out? We're going to get on Zillow right now. <laughs> there you go. That's how it works. They'll tell you whether it's been trashed? No, no. That's I, what I mean. That how, is do we, something how do we, we find that know. out? Right. But I'll that's, look up what they're selling. That's a very for good point. If somebody trashy inside, then it costs us thirty, forty thousand. All the numbers, doesn't it? Yes. I'm sure if we go, to, that we can actually probably go ahead and view the. Do they own any taxes? Probably. I'm probably. sure. Do you, do you know? Yes. They do owe taxes. It's not as much because their escrow was paying it until they stopped paying the mortgage. Mm. Um, we would be made whole though, no matter what happened. Yeah. No, I'm just I'm just figuring in what somebody has to look at right. if they're going to bid. Right. His estimate is 310000 To buy it. That's what it says on Zillow, the value. Well, that's a little scary. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'd have, we couldn't buy anything unless we had an appraisal anyway. Correct. You'd have to, You'd have to do the appraisal first. We can't buy anything unless we get it appraised. Are those estimates on the other, is that because this is an affordable unit? Are there others no, where those estimates are much higher? No, I mean, we could, I could look up another unit number, right? Yeah, let's. So if they say it's worth 350, I'd hate to pay more than that. Right. And if we've got a surplus in our SHI, I think it would be, we, we'd be crazy to pay more than 350. Absolutely. So the ones with garages are going for 440. They're much bigger. This is a. So maybe we set the limit at three. We, we know the bank is owed at least 261, so 250 would be too low, but maybe we just set the limit at three. Yes, yeah, and negotiate to that number. See what you can get. Right, negotiate yeah. to that number and say 350 is the cap. So if the adjustment really was, you said it was 340? Yeah, uh, 310 is what it's saying. Uh, I'm, I don't so, know, but maybe that's the affordable number. So, so you have know. to take 20% off of 310? Yes. No, it, which well, would be it'd 60. have to be market value. I don't know that this is giving you market value. I would imagine Zillow yeah, probably has to, yeah, probably in court it's affordable. So then, do we want to just make it three hundred thousand? I mean, to Chaz's point, if we if this falls off of the inventory, we're not in jeopardy. Right. And it may set a bad precedent for the town to. Obviously, I don't want the town to spend more than what we're going to get if we resell it. That's like sixty thousand. We're going to lose, right? So unit E is three eleven, but I don't think they're selling for that on Zillow. I don't think anything's selling for three hundred thousand. No, I can't no. imagine it. No, not anymore. No. I'm trying to look at recently sold. How many bedrooms and and how many baths are, are in the unit? Uh, it's two bedrooms. Bed oh, here we go. Recently sold. Sold February 29th. Two bedroom, two bath, 21 Merrimack Way, Unit D, 430. Okay, right, but does that have a garage? Does it have a garage? Oh, I didn't look. That's one right there. That's sold. So yeah. that's that's a sold one. But that's one with a garage. Is that a garage? Yeah, that's and that's sold for 430. Yeah, that's so garage. you're talking so, right. 80, so, 20% off that is 80,000 less. Right, but this unit is not it's comparable not, to that garage, unit. So it doesn't have a garage. That, that one's there, multiple There's, there's, there's no garage, it's smaller, there's... Yeah. They're very different, those. Go to 10 Merrimack Way and then do, like, they go A through H, I think. Let me see if I see any more. Yeah, I'm, I'm going through the... So now, SHI is good till 2030 at this point. Mm -hmm. So we do have time to make up. Yeah. And most of our bylaws are, are, are building in 12 and a half percent for any kind of multi, multi units. There's another one so here. Two bed, two bath, Caroline Way. That's over there, right? 
And it sold for 450 in January. Well, you're looking so for a bath and a half. It's, it's just yeah. it's two bad. This is two bedroom, two bath. So I mean, if you think about it, if at, at 300, it doesn't. If 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 we don't lose any money and it helps keep our inventory up, right? That's not a bad thing. Because we'll get that money back. <coughs> sure. Correct. Yes. So. Um, I just don't want to overpay for this right. thing. No, no, no. But but I don't think I I, I don't think that at three hundred, you're going to overpay. No. And and I. Uh, I think three hundred is a safe. Is I, safe. I, I see three forty, three forty two. But there's some higher. But those, you know. Well, I guess I like, Do you want uh, we have housing inside. Look, we don't know that either. Is there a way to? If they already have the auction set, do they do walkthroughs before auctions at all? They generally do it the day of the auction. Yep. Day of the auction. And they'll make it, they're not going to do much. They'll get the water to be able to turn on. I'm assuming if they haven't paid the mortgage, they probably didn't take care of the place. So I'm it's probably sure. pretty beat up. Well, 20% off of 340 is just over 60. Yeah. So now you're down to 280, 270 yeah. of, 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 of what you're actually talking for an actual value. Which would make a certain amount of sense because if the unit was really worth more than a lot more than 261, wouldn't the owner just put it up for sale and take the win rather than that's we, that's what I'd said too. Why get in today's on. competitive bidding market, when it comes to real estate, there'll be 30 people waiting in line to buy it if we, if someone puts it on the market, somebody right. fixes it up, puts it on the market. It's incredible how how fast things yeah how fast things go and how many people are, and they bid up. To get stuff, everybody's desperate for housing, and that's in the right. that's in the money market that people can afford. Yeah, right. But but for us though, that'd be afford. We we could we couldn't. I think have, you could. I, I mean, think if, if you, we gave them the flexibility to be able to to bid up to the three fifty, up to the three fifty, and then try and get for the best value that we can, if we can get it for three hundred or three ten or something like that. Well, I think if you go to three but, three three fifty, but you and that also gives you. I don't know. I guess that's how we vote on it. But if there's some damage or something we have to do, it would give us a couple extra dollars to do the repairs, to, to do a repair or whatever, fix a light. I, I don't know. I mean, we would probably leverage community housing for any like immediate repairs that needed to be done. I certainly wouldn't recommend that we start renovating a unit for somebody. God, no problem. Yeah, we'd be killed in prevailing wage. No, no, I'm not talking about renovating it so much as doing a repair that's necessary. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah like carpets and yeah. painting and stuff that like type, that. That type of thing. In, in still, it's public money. You're still going to do, you're going to play the same. I mean, well, it, it, it as is. well, we're kind of, you know, there's a well, couple it, of things here. If, 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 if Colin takes a walk down there and looks at the place and he finds out it's been trashed, then he's probably going to walk away anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that, the, you know, you have to bank on some, some common sense thought about how this goes or through. Or the numbers are going to come back really low and the, the bank's not going to sell it. Right. I mean, I, I, I mean, I do fear what we were talking about is you, you're giving the, the bank, you know, it's like, hey, these guys are willing to pay 350 So let's keep, let's keep the bidding going. Right. But, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, I think that, that if we go, well, well, you know what the deal is. I mean, if we go past 350 and and we can't afford the repairs. I mean, you just have to. You, you, right, right. You'll have to use your head. Colin. And that's the other problem is we can't actually go to the auction and bid because we have to do an appraisal first. You can't just throw out a number using public money. So, <coughs> where we would really the only way this works out is one somehow the bank changes its position, which it's been firm on for the last few weeks, and it delays the auction or cancels it and lets us just negotiate directly. Or two. The auction happens, nobody bids on it, and then they're like, eh, can you help us? In which case, we have more leverage. So you yeah. gotta believe that the, someone's gonna be bidding on that at that price. I think it's gonna go for, I think it's gonna go for stupid money. Yeah. That's, that's what it seems. Yeah. But at least if we have a horse in the race, or we have it, if we don't yeah. do something, we don't have an opportunity on it at right. all. We gotta at right. least try, and if yeah. it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Odds are, it's gonna go for silly money at the auction. Yeah. I, I, I I'm pretty comfortable with the 350. Right. I think that that's a reasonable amount of money, and so 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 we have to have it appraised mm -hmm. 
before we can bid on it. So we can only we, we can't can even, yeah we can't even bid on it. We can't well we can only bid on it up to the appraisal amount. Exactly. So we could negotiate. We could pay something less than the appraisal. Like if the bank was feeling very generous and said, "Make us whole, we'll walk away." We would still have to do the appraisal to show that we weren't overpaying. But the cap will be whatever the fair, whatever the appraisal is. That's how much you can use municipal money on. But then we'd have to sell for twenty percent under that number. Is that true? If you get correct, the appraisal, we would have to meet the affordability standards. Appraisal, we would have to sell it for 20 because the, would the appraisal then become the assumed fair market value of it? The market change between the time we purchased it and the time we sold it. And the appraisal is going to be before, the, uh, before it's, if there's damage done. Also, you know, if, you, if we got to think about that too. So the appraisal that we're going to be bidding on is before any repairs are made or whatever has to be done, if there has to be any work done. So that's a... <laughs> That's enough. It, it just, it's actually quite a mess because the bank won't um, right. work with us here. Is it worth the hassle? Well, so, well so, so, so my question still is if it's, so say it's, it's appraised at 350 and suppose we offer 350 and, and, and that the bank says, yeah, I'm, we're, we're good with 350. So, so we buy it for 350. Now we want to turn around and resell it. Are we allowed to sell it? For the 350 that we paid, or do we have to sell it for 20% less than that number? That's 20 percent less. 20 percent less. Oh, wait than a fair market Does value. Be 20, no. What if the market value is 400? That's, yeah. I think that's that's the question. So if the but market value is 400, if we've had and we paid 350, but but if You're if an appraiser, grand. if 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 an appraiser comes back at 350, I mean, so so the. I think the appraised the, value and the market value may be two different things. Yes. That's what I'm asking. Yes, so, they are. They are. Okay. Yes. So, so I, mean, I can't imagine they'll be wildly different, but that the only thing that appraisal matters for is that when the when our annual audit happens, we'll just have to provide that to say, look, we spent 280, which was less than the 320. So that appraisal is not a a snapshot in time where there's a legal entity saying this is the fair market value. Correct. Okay. That's CHAPA, which is okay. the monitoring agency, has formulas that EHL, EHOLC, the new housing cabinet, establishes that determines what it actually would sell for above the appraisal because the market okay. is so great. And right. then you subtract 20% from that. They would do that calculation for us, and they would remarket it in real estate it for us. And then the other option also, too, which we haven't discussed, is if we do buy the property, you know, and the Singsville Housing Authority takes control of it, they could use it as a rental property, too. If. Low-income low income rental? Uh, well, I, I think I'd, yeah. I'd rather, rather flip it. our money back. Yeah. I, I agree, because no, I agree. Have it stay in the, in I the agree 100%. Housing trust. Mm -hmm. so, so the first step is the appraisal before we can even decide what we're doing here, right? I think the first step is to move that money from the $250,000 that isn't getting used right India now. Lane back into our account. To get something for the town meeting just in case this can happen. Right. And if it can't happen and if it sells at auction on the first, then we pull it. I mean, we're kind of in the driver's seat here. If we can't get a reasonable deal on that, we walk away from it and we're not dying. Right. We're just trying to keep, we're just trying to Hold on know, take, take an opportunity that's before us and use it. And, right. and if it isn't, if it turns out because the money isn't right, then you it just walk work. away from it, nothing gained, nothing lost. Right, and if we get it and, uh, and able to keep it as an affordable for no cost to us, yeah, right. you know, just lawyer costs or whatever, that's, that's fine, but to spend 30, 40, 50 grand to hold it as an affordable. Right. Procedurally, though, I would recommend, because we're not looking at a $500,000 bill, I would recommend that we not touch the Indian Lane money just yet do this as a separate appropriation because the likelihood is we may not get to a point to spend this, and then we can ask the Affordable Housing Trust ahead of fall town meeting to provide an update because I do know there was some movement with mass thought more than we've seen in the past it's just kind of been slow so I'm not sure that the affordable housing trust would agree to forego the 250 for that project on the whims that there may be a chance to save a unit if that makes sense what would happen if you just put an article together and left it blank for the number and you bring it up on the floor if all goes well I mean, really here is a timing thing that's killing us. Well, I think they're two sort of separate issues. I do think we have to put a number on the warrant. 
because we have to Can notice the, pe the number on the warrant at the meeting. Somebody at the meeting could make a motion to amend it, but we have to kind of like an agenda. You have to give people an idea of what you're going to discuss. But I, I see that. Separate. I think if we're just going to allocate three or three hundred and fifty thousand, my preference would be that we do that as its own allocation, understanding that it's very possible we don't spend it, and then ask the affordable housing trust ahead of the October town meeting to give us concrete updates before we pull back, because that unit was for was specifically going to be for a veteran. They're kind of two different purposes, and the original intent of leveraging that money was that we'd be reimbursing it so they could keep going with the project. I'd hate for us to today say on the possibility we can renovate this project, you know, we could save this one unit, we'll forego the, the veterans one, if that makes sense. Yeah, I don't know, what, I don't know what, what the state's taking for why that's taking so long. We did. Eric Salerno did let me know at some point in like late September, early October, that the real estate division from MassDOT had conveyed some documents to town council. And then it's been a little bit slow from them since. And we speculated perhaps it had something to do with the state's financial position. And maybe they were trying to leverage that to make money. Um, but I would just hate for us to, because we'd have to put an article forward rescinding the money. I'd hate for us to do that if then the next week we find out we couldn't actually buy this unit anyway. And then the Affordable Housing Trust is left with nothing. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so just so I can have a complete understanding. Yes. So let's say market value is, to pick a number, 400000 That means 20% less than that would be 320 Correct. So we don't want to spend more than 320 If, in fact, this whole thing happens May 1st and the bank says, oh, we're not waiting on you guys, this, this is a mute point anyway, then. We would just pull it on the town meeting floor, yeah. So I would suggest we leave the Indian Lane money alone, mm -hmm. like you said. Yeah. We authorize 320000 to try and purchase this through a bid. And hopefully they will move the, the auction from May 1st to May 30th or whatever. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? So we'll be banking on that that 20% market value, that's what we won't be putting up for money. I think we don't want to get in a bidding war. We want the bank to just do the right Correct. Thing. We can't get in a bidding war because we're going to lose. At 320, we're going to lose. You know? But Other people aren't going to try and resell it for affordable. So it makes sense if we try and buy it. Right. What if, we can if there's somebody who wants to buy it, that's not, going to, that's not going to keep it. I mean. But again, we don't know what it looks like inside. It could need $100,000 worth of work, too. Right. The other thing that this vote would give me is leverage with the bank. Right now, we've been asking the bank, wait a minute, hold on, and let me see if we can get the money. If we have an affirmative vote from CPC for some amount of money, yep. knowing the history, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to jinx it, but that would be enough leverage for the bank, I think, to consider holding off on the auction altogether. Right now, why would they hold off? I don't even have the money to buy it, technically. Okay, so let's allocate the 320. Then it makes sense. Yeah. If you're going to use it as leverage, that's perfect. Yeah. Yep. You know, the money's allocated. That means we're serious, and then you can... And they can, yeah, exactly. You can always say, too, you know, with the CPC voting on town floor, it usually always clears through, and that would be a... If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We lose. Right. So, lose but the thing is, too, that they, we couldn't pass, we couldn't purchase it until... Make that a motion, Chavs. June 30th. I'd like to make a motion to uh, set aside $320,000 for the purchase of 10 Merrimack Way Unit C acquisition. I'll, second, I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That carries. Uh, Town Center Digital Sign Project. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Anyone that has driven over the bridge or along Middlesex Road knows that on the corner of the recently renovated First Parish parking lot for years now is an orange highway sign on wheels that is in Morse code because it's small and you can't actually get a message across. It is not in character with all the work that this committee has spent money on doing in the town center. You're saying you don't like it? I don't like it, but <laughs> okay, it serves well, a critical purpose. I just want purpose. you to say it out loud. Just... It serves a purpose. Come on, be so nice. So what I'm looking for, and I don't need, we don't need to set for, you know, firm locations tonight, but what I'm looking for is $100,000 to purchase a monument-style digital sign that would replace that, either on the corner of the first parish lot or somewhere else in the town center where it gets the most attention. I want to be clear that when we say digital sign, I'm not talking about the ones you see with like videos that twirl and rapid flashing lights. A, just a screen that can convey more than six letters so that people know when the town election is and all this other stuff. And I included um, two examples in your packet. 
these are just two companies that do this type of work. You can see that one of the quotes, the one that's in the stapled packet, is about 40 grand. It doesn't include installation. That's something that we would have to do separately. We, we have an electric, electri electrician on contract that we would use, but we would have to hire a local installer. The other one does include installation. Um, so in all likelihood, the project probably gets complete somewhere in $65,000, $70,000. But given uncertainty about where the location will be, which will, the location obviously determines how much we have to spend on electrical to run conduits to it. My preference is that it be in the corner of the first parish lot so that we don't take up too much of the part of the grass and that it's still visible. However, obviously, I'm open to, to other suggestions. Tonight, I just need... <laughs> Tonight, I'm just looking to get the funding authorization. These are just examples. There are other ones. I thought that doing the brick was simple, including the town of Tingsboro on the sign. And then again, while it has the capability to do pictures and videos, understanding the character of our town center, we would use this just for calm messaging. Is there a cost involved in updating or maintaining? I mean, is this something that, oh yes, well now we have a whole new batch of videos you can have or, or pictures and this is the price of that, or is this whole? This is the whole price. Obviously in the future we may have to replace pixels on the screen. CPC money can't be used for that anyway, so we'd have to do that out of the operating budget. Um, all The two models that we're looking at are an online system where you just type in your messages. You can drag and, drag and drop your own photos matching their pixel requirements. And there's no, for both of these, there's no annual software membership I should also have started with. Yeah, that's what we were looking for. It's yep. nice to be able to change Didn't know how message. to word it, but yes. <laughs> Schedule them. Get, get something out there really quick. And I was agreeing with you. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> so. And this would, again, uh, the only other thing I'll clarify is that this would be strictly for town for municipal town use. We wouldn't be renting it out for groups to advertise. It would be strictly messages that we control. Does this fit into our signed bylaw? It does. Okay. In general, municipal uses are exempt. However, because I don't think that we should be big brother and do what we want, this does align with the signed okay. bylaw. How does this align with CPC's mission? Because this is what a, does it, come out of? Um, it could come out of receipts, it could come out of open space. It's enhancing the community in an area that the town has spent quite a bit of historic money restoring, eliminating that nasty orange sign, and... Um, well, that looks pretty. Yeah, uh, well... You know, if we should just paint that yellow and Historically color, correct yeah. digital sign. Correct. <laughs> just correct. like Lincoln had. Yes. In front of his house. He would have picked this one, I'm sure of it. <laughs> All right, I'm in. Yeah, let's I'm go. In. Uh, get a motion? Yeah. Sure, I'm going to roll. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to authorize CPC to uh, give $100,000 for the Town Center Digital Sign Project. Motion and a second. All right. I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. That carries. Okay. Well, we don't spend 100000 It will just go back. And yeah. Right. <clears throat> uh, we'll put C and D yeah, we together. We have the Lake Massa Pog. We control on the Lake Muscat, which is things we do every year. You want to have a discussion or you want to? Yeah, if we could actually I also lump, I, if I we could lump all the last ones on by looking at the draft warrant. Yeah, yeah those just the reserves yeah. and the administrative payments. Do we have an application from Muscat for the 7000 I know no. we have one for the 3500 from Massapog. No, I, I, it's the same one that I've used. I, I meant to move it over, and I, that's, my, that's a clerical error on my piece. Yeah. I would just feel more comfortable if we had some sort of documentation yeah. to have it I'll in move the, I'll move the application into the packet and repost it on your website. Okay. Yep. Okay. And that's then the, now the administrative expenses, we haven't really used, it's still the same 50000 that's there, right? It's just Yeah, and be, every year the administration, the unspent administration money, it doesn't build up year over year. It, it rolls, rolls back to it the rolls fund back balance. In. So I just copied over the fifty thousand. If the committee wanted to, we could certainly reduce that to thirty. But but it still stays anyway. It's, it's, not like, it's, it's going not back like to the fund balance. You want to make a motion on the weed thing? You could. You can no, actually make it all. We're going to lump them all, all three oh, together. Oh, we're just going to lump it together. Yeah. Oh, all right. So we're we'll, just hearing aids over there. <laughs> can't be nice. Cool. Marie, come on. <laughs> all right, can I get a motion on Massapog, Muscopic, and the debt reserves? 
I'll second that. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries. Okay, out of business. Um, I've been chair for about four or five years. If anybody else wants to, we haven't done a reorganization in, in five years. I think Darrell was before me, so anybody got any? So I'd like to make a motion to have Larry Clausen be the new chair. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. I got a motion, and, and, and I have a second. Oh, I second that. <laughs> any further discussion? I have a question. Do you not want to do it anymore? No, I just, I, like, it's a select board. All, all the boards, you know, reorganize. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every, I've been chair now, what, probably five years? You know what I mean? So. I was thinking you were finally getting the hang of it, Ed. I know. <laughs> I know, finally. But, you know, you always want to... I've had enough of that. I think it's yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> time I think that has been a fantastic chair and nope. should do it for I another so. two or three years at least. Well, no, I just, you always want it, you know what I mean? So I got a motion and is that a second. All any for discussion? Well, I, are you up for this? I'll, I'll, I'll go along with the yes. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. That carries. Uh, Guy is vice chair. Do you want to stay on as vice chair? I didn't even know I was vice chair. You are vice so chair. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to re, you know, it's time to redo things. You know, it's time to. No, I don't. I'll be vice chair. It's up. To, well, I, I need a motion. I, I made whatever. a motion that uh, Charles becomes the vice chair. I got a motion. Do I get a second? I second that yeah, motion. Yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we've never had a clerk. Well, we had a clerk. Hey, you don't have the floor anymore. You're not chairman. Yeah. Like, we got a floor. We got a minute. Wow. Larry, can you talk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, our uh, clerk. We really don't have a. We, Kenny used to be the clerk a long time ago, right? No, oh, he's a secretary. Well, that's you we'll a, the clerk. Well, they call it the clerk secretary. So but, I'd like to have uh, Colin be the clerk. I mean, I'll, if I'm at your meetings, I'll do your minutes anyway. So. Okay, so we're also we're all easier for me to keep track. Okay. Any other business? Anybody it's have anything they want for you to do it too? <laughs> Can I just get a formal vote recommending the CPC article, which will just change because I'll change that number to three twenty? Did we? What did that article? You voted them individually, but in the guidebook we include your recommendation on the whole article. It's just a formality. Okay. Instead of convening another meeting. What do you want to do, Larry? <laughs> don't, don't, get, don't, don't get the guy scared the first night on. He's probably going to excommunicate Ed first thing. So you want a motion on each one individually? No, no, if you just move to recommend to town meeting the CPC article as presented, that's all. Okay. All right. So can we get that motion? Yes. Thank get you. a motion. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Isn't that my job? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> this is so comical. Uh, I just this, this, this is probably the best board to be on. No, no, I can, I, I can sit there and I can. How about the staff and the sash? Are you going to bring that in for him? I, I, so I can poke. I, I can poke that <laughs> on the side. The scepter? Yeah. I'm just wondering, does he? Does he, he get a scepter? He's got it. No, it says, that's going to be his wife. Yeah. All right. Um, any other business? Motion to adjourn. So moved. So, thank you and good night.